As with all our rounds covered on the Inland Off-Road Championship, Stella 250 was going to start with the prologue to decide the start line order. And after that, we'll be racing on real time. And as we've seen on the Championship Tour, it's all about getting a good run going first out the gate to try and get to the sharp end of the field. Prologue has become key if you want to walk away with those prizes at the end of the day. Being fast though sometimes has its drawbacks. Ernst Roberts and Henry Kerner started the qualifying race in pole position and that meant finding and opening the route and with that they did lose some time. An overshoot early on costing the team valuable seconds and road position. They also encountered a flat tyre not even a kilometre after the start of the prologue run. Not the best start to the Stella 250. The tyre was changed in lightning fast time though and they did keep out of further trouble, posting still the fastest time overall to start the main race from pole position as well. That was definitely going to be scaring the rest of the competition. Big pace coming out of the Nissan crew. After winning the first event of the year, Hanno Biermann and Peter de Beer have not had another clean run to date. They were hoping to put the bad luck behind them here at Stella and were looking for a faultless run in the prologue. That, however, was not to be. With flat wheels and broken drive belts, the order of the day for the side-by-side -side crew. They were always on the back foot and had to make up ground on the rest of the front runners. Prologue, as we've seen throughout 2020, can be the making or breaking of a good or bad race. For Yanni Fisser and Donnie Murray, they decided to spend some time rebuilding the Class T Ford Ranger and dusted off Yanni's trusty old Class S Toyota Hilux. Yanni has had great success in this Hilux in the past and being a seasoned racer, he pedaled it at a great rate of knots, staying out of trouble and with Donnie keeping him on the road, they came home first in Class S and second overall, sitting pretty come the main race ahead. It seemed like Old Faithful, the Class S single cab, was bringing back the old magic. It really has been a season to forget for the Mostert brothers, having had uphill battles all season long. Suddenly, the defense of their number one plate looked to be a little bit off in the distance. But never wants to give up, and seeing the season was only at the halfway marker now, they were certainly going to give it their all to try and claw back some points. A few small issues saw them qualify third in class, obviously saving something for the big show later on, with it all to do come the main race. Third was still in with a shout. With their Nissan Navara fixed up and looking spick and span, the Penta Motor Group entry of Philip Boerter and Rulof Jens van Furen were hoping for less drama than what they had counted at their first outing over a month ago. Suspension issues this time and a flat tyre with non-functioning jacks thrown into the mix, all with a few kilometres to go. Did their qualifying time? No good whatsoever. But with another 180 kilometres of full racing to go, anything could still happen. For the boys that are very new to the sport but have already shown guts, form and speed with only one race under their belt.
The Panda boys had suffered a big rollover at the previous event, but had done a lot of learning. Got the suspension and everything set up good on their car, and we're starting to feel like a race package. Lawrence Van Vake had alongside him this time Peter Fisser, one of Yanni Fisser's sons. Unfortunately for them though, a CV joint pulled out of the front diff and subsequently broke the diff bracket, causing them to start the main race a lot further down the order than they should have. The Ds though, can come through the pack as long as they can live on in the terrain. For the D11 crew, could the fairy tale continue for Stompy Minard and Adrian Roots in the Star Lubricants Caltex Delo Cruiser? Three Class D wins out of three races put them at the top of the Class Championship log, as well as in the top three for the overall production vehicle Championship Honours. And with the Stella 250 literally running Stompy's backyard being a farmer in the area, all eyes were on the D11 Cruiser to see if it would be magical win number four on the cards. Out of the prologue, posting the fastest time for Class D, it was a very good start to the day. Things were looking good once again. For D double one. It's very rare in our off road championship that you see someone going and scoring a clean score sheet. Let's see who can beat them as we continue prologue after the break.